somewhere in the beginning of the 16th century, when modern science started to uh, emerge in, in our society and then modern science step by step uh, became successful and uh, got a grip of uh, and, 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 and uh, became dominant um, in, uh, in Western culture first and then actually around the world. We could see that while at that moment, we started to consider the entire universe as a machine, a set of elementary particles that interact with each other according to the laws of mechanics, and not only as a machine, but as a dead machine. Everything in this universe was considered to be dead. There, was, there is no life in a mechanistic universe. Uh, and that's, yes, that's exactly why, of course, well, and at the same time, and that's essential for me, at that moment, the human being started to be in the grip of the illusion that through rational understanding, it could completely reduce the mystery of the universe and of life, and that uh, through rational understanding, it could understand everything in the universe, it could predict everything in the universe, it could control everything in the universe, it could manipulate everything in the universe, it could itself recreate, literally recreate everything in the universe, it could make artificial plants, trees, and then in the end, you see how this idea emerges very soon in the tradition of enlightenment, at the same time while the human being declared uh, that there was no such thing as a god in society. Uh, it sneaked itself to the throne of God and it put itself on the throne and it started to believe <laughs> that the human being could become godlike and that it would be able to uh, live eternally, that it would be able to eliminate death, suffering, dying, uh, that it would be able to. Um, create a constant happiness for itself through biochemical manipulation of the blood. If you read, for instance, the contemporary, we have um, in the 19th century, you have a few thinkers who expressed that very clearly, that idea that uh, the human being should become God. Uh, and now we see the same idea in, in such people as uh, Yuval Harari in his book, uh, Homo Deus, for instance. Uh, so. That, I think, uh, in the end, um, well, that mechanistic thinking, uh, its promises that it will bring uh, everything to the human being, that it will fulfill, fulfill all his dreams and all its desires, uh, but in a, in a hidden way, it immediately starts to impoverish the core of human existence in this respect that it immediately isolates the human being from its, uh, its natural environment, from its social environment, from its human environment. And I, I, I have experienced that in a very tangible and concrete way in my own life. I have the stubborn uh, drive to understand rationally. And, um, um, it took me until I was 35 years old before I suddenly, or maybe I should say before it was revealed to me that the essence of life and the essence of the real around us, of reality, of, of the real, I prefer the word the real, the essence of uh, the other human beings around us, uh, transcends rationality, escapes rationality. And Paradoxically, for me, uh, I discovered this in a strictly rational way. I, I, I started to study somewhere when I was around 35, I started to study complex dynamical systems theory and chaos theory. And these theories actually show in a, and that's paradoxical, in a strictly rational way, that the essence of every complex dynamical system, which is uh, uh, most phenomena in nature, it be, is strictly irrational, literally, that it behaves as an irrational number. And um, suddenly, and I know many people, or not so many people, but 
uh, yes. people who are familiar with these theories. And in a, same, in a strange way, they do not experience this revelation. <laughs> but for me, I suddenly noticed that the world around me um, is irrational and can never be grasped by logical language, for instance, and rational language. And that suddenly made me realize what Niels Bohr, the famous physicist, really meant when he said, when it comes to atoms, language can only be used as poetry. I suddenly started to understand that, that was literal, literally, that logical language, and that's a strange thing. At that moment, so, a few things happened in me, in myself. And I first started to realize what happened in myself when I was four or five years old. At the moment I, at that moment, I started to open up and to resonate in a more direct way with my environment and, and my, my relationship with death and dying um, also changed. And later on, I started to understand what happens when you believe that everything around you can be understood in a rational way, in a logical way. You quite literally build a wall around you. A wall, because what is logical reasoning? Logic, in logical reasoning, you connect the one logical idea to the other without space in between. That's exactly what logics is. In, logical, in, a, in a line of logical re reasoning, the one ID inevitably leads to the other ID, and the other ID leads inevitably to the other ID. In this way, that there is a strict, fixed path between the, the first ID and the last one. That's what a set of mathematical equations is. That's what, that's what a set of, um, that's what geometrics is. And in that way, logical thinking shows the most straightforward characteristic with a machine. Because in a machine, that's exactly what makes a machine so attractive. If you push one button, the end result will be inevitably one thing. So it gives you, it gives the human being a sense of control and of predictability, a sense of mental control a sense of material control. That's what makes the machine metaphor so attractive. Why do we continue to believe that the universe is a machine? Just because I think it satisfies one of them, or it takes one of the most fundamental anxieties of the human being away. The anxiety for uncertainty, 